Okay, hi everyone. I'm Natalie Belfler and I'm with Perkins and Will, the architecture firm, um, and looking forward to the discussion with you all today. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brooke Trivis and I'm with Perkins and Will, working with Natalie and Tyler. It's great to be here. I'll jump in. Can you hear me, Tyler and group? Yep. Great, so Rob Adams with Halverson Design. We're landscape architects. We have a Boston office and a Portland office. Um, I'm recently moved up to Portland West End about three years ago. So um, we do a lot of public realm uh, up and down the East Coast. So happy to be working on this. Hi, I'm Heather uh, working at Halverson and on the landscape architecture team. And it's exciting to see all your faces. It makes the project much more real. So hello. Well, thank you, team. Um, I'm Tyler Hinckley uh, with Perkins and Will, and I recognize a lot of you from the visioning and uh, concept phase, which is amazingly uh, about a year ago, I guess we, we were wrapping that up. Um, so um, we're excited to uh, present to you all today um, what, we, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna share my screen. And we're going to dive in. Can you guys see the screen? Yep. I'm going to make it full screen. OK, um, so we're going to dive in here. Uh, our agenda for the day is um, to give you a quick update on where we are in the process, uh, present our current ideas about site design and the building design and really as a as teeing off the discussion feedback about um, what this building can be and how you all imagine it to feel. Um, we're also going to provide a, a forum or a venue um, to gather your questions. Um, so we, we uh, encourage your questions um, and we'll we'll gather those. Maybe we'll use the chat. Uh, Barrett, I know, was working on um, gathering questions from as many folks as possible, and then we'll um, be reviewing those and, and providing feedback and, and responses. Um, so that's that's our agenda. Um, try to get through the first three bullets in, in, in the first half hour here. Um, so um, just a, a quick update. As I mentioned, we last really met with you all about a year ago. Um, where we are is, is in schematic design. So we began schematic design uh, about a month or so ago, a little more, um, kind of really getting into the details, bringing our full consultant team on board um, to, to really dig into this project. And, and we're heading towards the end of that um, phase where we really want to have the, the outline of the project, all the parts and pieces defined um, so that we can uh, get a, agreement on that and, and estimates and approvals and all of that before we move into the next phase, which is called design development. And then that phase is where we really start to um, think about materiality and the feel of the space. So we're at a really important time to be getting your all's feedback. Um, not just do we have the right pieces here uh, before we finalize the SD phase, but as we start to see what those pieces are, um, what might they start to look like, feel like um, as, as the design develops um, and, and how we incorporate your feedback and your points of view into all of that. Um, we have a, you know, specific uh, agendas that we've been following. Um, as you can see, we're getting towards the end of our series of um, SD meetings um, and, and folding in all of these different uh, components uh, of our team uh, from structural engineering, to building systems design, HVAC, electrical, site design, civil, all those components folding in. Um, we've continued to keep the project goals that we developed really with all of you during the visioning and concept phase at the heart of, of our process. And, um, you know, always keeping that in mind um, as we uh, develop the design. So this is just a reminder. Um, one of the ways that we've been um, checking in on that is meeting with smaller focus groups 
So this is from a, a couple weeks ago where we brought a site uh, study model with us and met with a select group of representatives of the community and got some really good feedback there um, about uh, where the project was and where it was headed, which we've uh, taken that feedback and, and folded it in. Um, and so, you know, here we are, as I said, um, towards the end of SD, and uh, we want to present to you both the site design uh, as well as the building design. And, and Rob, I'm going to turn this over to you, but um, preface it with this. This was an important step here um, because things have changed since we um, uh, finished the concept design in terms of the uh, project site and um, some of the constraints there. Um, so this has been a critical um, step in the process. And, and Rob, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and you tell me when you want me to advance. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. Um, so again, I, uh, I'm gonna be able to present, I apologize, I'm sitting on a roadside stand halfway between Boston and Portland. My 16 year old turned 16 today. So I have a lot, I have a lot on my plate, both emotion, emotionally maybe and professionally, but uh, so I, I'm going to give a, a overview, and I guess if you have specific questions, don't hesitate to ask, but Tyler's totally abreast, so when I have to drop off, he can respond to any questions later on during the Q&A. Um, and we'll talk, I'll talk kind of conceptually uh, at the beginning, and then we'll talk kind of more specific about actual elements of program. But uh, two things really, like now that spring is dauntingly near, right, this is an exciting time to talk about uh, open space and how we can use uh, the public realm as well as our private kind of side and backyards. Um, it's much harder talking in the middle of January about open space. Um, but also the other part that I think is interesting, you know, within a residential neighborhood of a lot of our projects, uh, we model after this idea of kind of a, a residential home, this idea of the semi-public, semi-private front yard, side yards, and then the private kind of uses of backyard. And a lot of our open spaces, a lot of our parks follow this model. And I think, you know, this project is a great, you know, Portland Community Squash is a great example of that. So kind of globally, we've thought about like, how does the site and the building address the public realm, right? The sidewalk, the streetscape in this residential tree-lined neighborhood, right? There's a lot of activity and excitement and accidental interaction, as we like to call it, that happens on that kind of buffer between uh, the front yard and, and the public sidewalk. And so you'll see this idea of a front porch and Tyler will get into more the architecture, but having a welcoming presence onto the public sidewalk and then having a small spill out space so that people can sit and gather and talk as community, uh, whether it be internal or external, pass by the building. Secondly, this idea of a kind of a bat, I'll flip then to the backyard where more kind of private barbecues, fire pits, right? It's a more uh, resident based, user based social program. And so the idea of capitalizing on that uh, backyard space for more of those uh, internal uh, outdoor spillouts. And then the side yard, uh, uh, two side yards, one we're going to be using for parking. And uh, Tyler mentioned we'll get to that in a little bit. But the other side yard also becomes. This idea of uh, an outdoor classroom ability to spill out, I think, in the room that uh, Baron and others are in now, but the opportunity to expand, and really a mantra, I think, both of Tyler and our firms is how can we, right, use found landscape, use found architecture, if you will, to to create uh, larger spaces, interconnected spaces, so this the connection between outside and interior is many times blurred, and so this idea of creating a small spill out paved area maintaining some of the existing trees, but providing the opportunity for classrooms to spill out and a big flexible lawn as much as we could manage on that uh, left side, plan left side, and then also uh, a uh, athletic sports court. So a half court basketball and, and pickleball court. And then on the right, um, providing parking, right? Uh, we've had some initial meetings with some attorneys, a uh, real estate attorney on the project. Um, and because of our proximity to multimodal transportation, we're really not required to provide parking from a zoning point of view. And so we're able to provide, I think, seven or nine spots along that property to the east, plan right, that was re recently uh, incorporated into the overall project. Um, obviously, 
long conversations uh, in the future with community and and the city to make sure that we're you know everybody's um, moving forward in a in a positive direction. But the idea of providing some off street parking that could occur, uh, as well as a place for a dumpster, you know, some ancillary um, activities along there. But again, this idea of um, trying to just use some really simple materials and to take advantage of some of the outdoor real estate that we have. And so again, right, uh, a simplicity of brick and paving materials, looking at recycling some of the granite, sorry, some of the concrete slabs that are out there and repurposing them for um, some paving uh, in certain locations so that we're trying to reduce our carbon footprint. We're also very considerate of the tree species that we have. And so we're trying to maintain as many street trees and add new street trees um, and minimizing the amount of tree removal that we had. And the next, uh, Tyler, I think are just a couple precedent images um, of the quality of the spaces that we're looking to provide. So on the bottom left is something we can em em envision that exterior classroom to be some hardscape, some softscape, movable furniture, whether it's tree stumps or store-bought furniture. And then on the bottom right or on the right side, this idea of uh, some kind of enclosure type, uh, simple but funky benches, some simple fire pits, outdoor grills in that back area. And then the top right image, this idea of having, you know, a landscape buffer between the building and the sidewalk, but also the opportunity to provide seating. Next, Tyler, if you want to make advance one. Um, and then as I talk, this idea of uh, trying to reduce our footprint. And so there's a lot of kind of nickel and dime, if you will, small concrete slabs that exist around the site and maybe some extra masonry that comes from the building. And so can we find a way to incorporate that into the outdoor classroom or into the, some, some of the kind of more uh, casual uh, paving and seating areas? So that's something we're going to pursue. Next, Tyler, please. I think that might be it. That's it. All right. right so so, that, can, uh, so, we, so can we just summarize please. real flat? real fast, especially for the students, the fun things yep. they're gonna get to engage in. We've got a barbecue, we have outside seating, there's an outside classroom. Let's stick, can we just give that list real fast, just exciting yep. list for these kids? Yeah, exactly. All right, so a place to hang out, a little seat wall and some furniture out on the sidewalk, um, on the sides, you know, a basketball court, a pickleball court, and then in the backyard, some fire pits and grills. And I'm hoping, you know, finding a lot of different seating opportunities, movable furniture, funky benches, logs, what it, whatever it may be, but just providing, you know, places for you guys to spill outside of the building and, and both hang out as well as learn. We even talked about um, the basketball court, uh, you know, oh, being yeah. an opportunity for an art project, right? I don't know if some of you have seen some of the amazing uh, basketball court artwork. I know there's one down the street in Salem near me um, where this could be a really cool opportunity uh, for the, the community uh, to engage with making it your own. Uh, so that's a suggestion there. That's why that's shown in different colors. All brightly colored. Yeah, and it could be something that gets painted every year, right? There's a little design competition or a party around, you know, repainting the basketball court every year. It's something we do on a lot of projects and it ends, ends up being a lot of fun. Tyler, would it for two minutes, can the students just tell us if that covers the kind of things you're looking for? Or is there anything missing from those from that list? And maybe we can put it in the chat. And if you want to chat back, go ahead. Any students want to say thumbs up? Does that seem to cover what you're looking for? Brooke, every, every student has a paper and a pencil too. So you guys are going to get a lot of notes. Um, okay. Awesome. okay. And, but we lose the kids at 5.30. Yeah, so all right, we'll go into yeah, yeah. we'll and, and just so you know, um, we uh, gathered all of the letters that, that all the students wrote about what they envisioned um, the future PCS to be from, from ideas like basketball or, um, you know, things like that to, to even menu items for the cafe. So you'll see some of the language about that that we'll use at the, at the last slide of the presentation to tee up some of the further discussion. All right, um, so awesome. anything that you wanted to finish off uh, there, no, uh, Rob? No, looking forward to, uh, again, uh, all comments good. So please uh, send them uh, however you can get them to us and happy to respond and incorporate. So thank you. Great. Happy birthday.
to your yeah 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 thank 16 you 16 year old <laughs> i know does that still come with a driver's license uh he just started driver's ed uh last week so uh white knuckle time uh for parenting right. is ensuing so yeah good luck thank you all right thanks guys we're going to move on to building design so we can um, move through this. Um, and so I'm just going to outline uh, some of the, the layout uh, that we've developed. And then Natalie's going to go into um, some of the design progress uh, that we've made and some thinking there. Um, so here's where the existing facility is in terms of what it looks like and, and all the different spaces. So this is what you're familiar with. Um, and, and one thing just to note, it's a, a critical game that we're playing here is we have a, a maximum square footage for lot coverage. And that's what we're working through is to try to get to that, um, take advantage of as much space as we can uh, to give you places to have uh, more squash, um, more gatherings, um, more places to study, more places to um, hang out um, within the limits of our site. So that's, that's what we've been working through. Um, so what we're showing here are the two areas for the additions. Very similar to what we had at Concept, um, the difference being that with the um, additional site, we're now showing an additional squash court. Um, and so what that does is it really shows here a layout of all of the spaces that we're developing. Uh, areas that are in hatched, uh, these sort of diagonal lines here, are areas that are mostly out of scope. Um, in some cases, we're lightly touching edges of those conditions. But um, pretty much what we're talking about is the commons and entry and new kitchen, the renovated um, changing areas and, and restrooms, and then um, the new squash courts here on this side, uh, the new uh, and renovated library, storage, and uh, fitness areas. So if we take it just a step back, current entry is here. New entry is in generally the same place, right? But it's a little closer to the street and it has a proper vestibule um, you know, with, with um, open glass doors so that everybody can see. As you come in, to your right would be the new commons. So that's really becomes the living room of, of the um, BCS, right? Um, there'll be a reception desk uh, here at the front. Uh, currently it's across the hall, a little closer to the door now. And with a direct adjacency to the commons, the entry, the squash entry, and the corridor down to the classrooms. Um, as we move through the commons, uh, we have a direct relationship to the front porch. Um, and, and, you know, we're still working through ideas of maybe having a door or two that open directly onto that front porch. So that's something that we've been um, discussing and, and talking about. Um, at this end is where the kitchen, uh, the, the renovated and expanded kitchen to serve the cafe will be located. Um, in between that and the existing corridor, we're, we're showing uh, uh, the impacts to the offices, as well as the conversion of a, a couple restrooms into a, a wellness um, slash mother's slash prayer room, uh, sort of a small private space that can be used by, you know, a, one or, or two or three people at a time uh, for privacy. Um, in this zone, uh, some of you may recall from the uh, concept study, we spent a lot of time talking through uh, ways to provide a more inclusive um, changing and showering uh, facilities for all users of the community um, and preferencing um, more of the gathering spaces to public areas like the commons for larger gatherings or the library for smaller, more intimate gatherings rather than having gathering space uh, or lounge space within the locker areas um, so that those are not private, um, you know, uh, 
uh, spaces that can be more inclusive of all genders, all ages um, throughout the community. And so what we're showing are um, private changing rooms. These are full, uh, full height walls with full doors and um, locks with occupancy indicators. Same thing for the restrooms that have a private shower in four of those restrooms um, for showering up after squash, as well as um, uh, two additional restrooms uh, to serve the entire building. Um, <clears throat> what we're also showing on the other side is uh, the, the new squash courts that are being proposed. So we're showing two additional singles courts and one doubles court um, that you walk through kind of where the existing um, doorway that leads towards the exterior wall right here, uh, just expanding that a bit to lead you through into the new squash wing. Um, and another thing that we're proposing um, in a very um, economical way, as, as economical way as possible, is consolidating the fitness zones, both cardio and weights into this zone. Um, so again, thinking about bringing lounge spaces that were previously you know, in private zones, like private women's locker room, private men's locker room, private student lounge, bringing those spaces together into more public and common spaces, and then repurposing that space to you know, better locate fitness areas right, right next to each other, more visible, um, and then repurpose some of those kind of back of house spaces for things like mechanical or storage or laundry. Um, so that's, that's the big idea of the plan. Um, if I didn't mention it, did I say there's two singles and a doubles court? So it increases, really doubles the number of people that can be playing um, at a time. Um, I, think, I think that's enough before we dive into just explaining the, the, the concepts, Natalie. Great. Yes, thank you, Tyler. So this uh, set of diagrams might be familiar to some of you. I think a lot of the formal moves that we're exploring are similar to what was discussed during concept, which is that um, there are really these uh, two attitudes towards the additions. There's the more open and transparent box, which um, is the commons or living room, which faces onto the street. And then there are these solid volumes, which are the squash courts um, to uh, adjacent to your existing squash courts. And so something that we will begin to really get into during our next phase, design um, uh, document, and design um, is the articulation of the brick facade. So um, the existing brick wall is something we want to continue to develop and understand how, um, how we can start to play with that perforation. And I think on the next slide, we'll uh, talk about some different options there, uh, which we'd love for you to write down um, your kind of feedback and first thoughts on. And, uh, and really um, kind of the last move is this uh, dynamic articulation of the entry sequence, which we're gonna start to see in some of the views uh, coming up. So we'll come back to that. So some of the ideas that we're exploring for the treatment of the new brick facade is, as I mentioned about porosity, how much you can see through it. So the three um, ideas here are striation, um, which can be thought of as kind of vertical planes or pillars, um, and the idea that the texture um, within the brick uh, layment um, could be made. The idea of a gradient, um, something that's more gradual. Um, and then lastly, the frame, uh, where um, just as a picture frame um, or framing a view, um, there's a moment where there is a perforation change and light and views can be seen through. So um, more on that to come in the coming weeks. Um, and so this is an elevation from Noise Street, so the north elevation, um, which is um, hasn't been updated yet to reflect some of the new um, changes, um, but we can see that in the next slide. I think what we're getting at, oh, sorry, Tyler, if you don't mind going back, 
Um, what we're getting at here is really to the left, uh, what you're seeing are the squash courts in behind. Um, and then as Tyler was circling, um, a zone for that brick facade wall to continue on, um, the idea that there could be a change in texture there, um, then the existing squash court space, uh, a very open living room and commons, um, and then continuing that brickwork um, through to the outdoors and starting to frame that outdoor classroom or spill out space. Um, and so on the next slide, we can see um, a perspective view along the sidewalk of really what that porch might start to feel like, some of the activities, um, whether there's um, yoga classes or, or other uh, meditations or other uh, painting um, that wants to happen out there. And perhaps the cafe can even spill out a little bit into there. I know landscape has a lot of ideas about seating. So we're working um, together on incorporating that. Um, but really the idea that, uh, as you'll see in the views, looking at timber structure and continuing that out um, to the outdoors um, for a really warm feeling. Um, okay, so just a couple of slides um, here on um, exterior and squash precedents. So we talked a little bit about the brick. Um, so those are the uh, images in the upper right hand corner and then the lower kind of left hand side is really um, a conversation we're going to begin to have on what that squash volume wants to be. Um, right now we're considering a metal panel and so there's lots of ways that can be articulated. In the middle there you're seeing again kind of a vertical treatment, um, what we call a standing seam um, metal panel. Um, then um, below it um, is maybe a more conventional corrugated metal panel, but there can be ways that we detail and really make it unique to the project. Um, and then lastly, on the left, um, this is looking at uh, kind of the idea of the porosity of the metal panel that perhaps at some of these glazed openings, um, which you saw in the plan, um, looking to the back and to the um, to the parking, there might be a kind of veiling of it. Um, so offering some privacy and solar shading um, integral to the skin. Um, and then lastly here to talk about the squash courts. So um, Tyler, I'm gonna let you talk a little bit on this one about uh, the performance features of having a dark squash court versus a light. Yeah, we've talked about um, the you know movement towards uh, streaming of squash, um, the potential to host tournaments now that you're gonna have more squash courts um, and that any video for training and also just to um, kind of break the mold that a dark squash court with a white ball uh, could you know, be whether it's a, a glass court or a solid court. Um, and, and we think that that could be an interesting and, and fun uh, way to really um, sort of change up the perception of of squash, um, and and you know um, make for a unique place. Um, and so you know this this kind of solution certainly makes for easier viewing for for any of the of those of you who um, you know watch squash tournaments like I do. Um, that's that's more to more to be determined. Yeah, um, but I think it's, it's a nice opportunity to have kind of one of each. Oh, hello, <laughs> special guest on. Um, and uh, really prepare for, for the big matches and the big games on, on the dark courts. Um, so- And those are just, you know, that's what's, you know, uh, happening at the, the new Spectre Center. So they have um, dark doubles, uh, wall, you know, dark walled courts at doubles as well as singles. Um, we see that across the industry as a trend um, that will continue uh, and, and, you know, maybe you even consider painting your existing courts dark. Okay, and so next we're um, just having a little uh, feel here of some of the interior precedents that we're beginning to look at. Um, thank you to whoever sent um, some of the, I don't know if they were Pinterest uh, boards, but uh, we really loved the, the cafe display that you, um, you sent to us. So that's definitely something we're gonna 
continue to work with um, our, um, I guess, uh, cafe consultants with. Um, so just some ideas here about what that timber structure could feel like. The idea um, in the upper right hand corner um, that we'll see in some of the views that there could be a bench between it, a really lovely place to sit in the sun and read a book. Um, and really coming back to, uh, I guess, the, um, the idea of the home and the living room and that this is a soft, comfortable space to be in. Um, and uh, to the left, we're looking at some ideas of the library zone. Um, there's an existing window um, within the what's currently the men's locker. So um, the idea of having a workspace along there and communal table, which we'll see, or we have seen in the plans. And then just a little bit on some of the interactive art pieces, which we, we definitely read a lot about in um, the, uh, the letters from the students and would love to hear more on um, of, of how interactive art is happening here. So what you're seeing in the locker zone in this image um, is a piece of canvas that uh, can continually be pulled down and painted. And so you can imagine every season it's refreshed. This could also be um, more simply a canvas um, that is painted every year. Um, and so what we're moving on to looking at here is an axonometric view of that living room. So at the bottom of the page is the entrance in, you're seeing the vestibule. Um, and um, this is a view of that as you come in, there's um, a, a wood slatted ceiling that really brings your eye down towards the library, uh, which will be uh, acoustically separated through a glazed door. Um, there's that opportunity for a mural and artwork, um, then a large reception desk with lots of room in behind um, for the pro shop, uh, rackets and other uh, paraphernalia there. And uh, you can see um, in the next view, this is um, a first iteration of what that commons might feel like. So there is clear story windows. It feels like the ceiling's almost floating um, by letting light come through on both sides. Um, we love whoever suggested a fireplace um, that that's in the project um, now. Um, so uh, that this could be a really cozy space uh, with an area rug, uh, which is on top of a polished concrete floor. Um, and I think to the um, right of the image, you can see um, the idea of that bench um, along there and the porch. Um, and so the next view um, it's just a section through that space so we can see the relationship of the porch between um, the seating zone of the living room, um, the fireplace, uh, what we are now um, illustrating as um, one of the offices, that corridor, and the locker zone, um, which is really um, meant to feel quite open. Um, and with the idea being that with visibility over the lockers, it feels a little bit more safe seeing who's coming in and who's coming out. And those are the change rooms that you see. It's kind of like the, um, the blue um, portals. And so as Tyler mentioned, those will have locks that are associated to the lighting. So no chance of someone walking in on anyone. Um, and so the last view um, is a view of the cafe. Um, and so this is an area for development. All of these renders, um, we really try to uh, limit the amount of materiality because as Tyler mentioned, we're gonna be getting into that more in DD. Um, but just to give you a flavor of what that wood is gonna start to feel like, um, that there could be um, a, an espresso machine, smoothie bar, um, soup uh, heater along this front area the possibility to people be sitting at the counter um, and kind of a more of the, um, I don't want to say heavy cooking, but more of the prep work happening in behind um, and some of the, and then more traditional uh, seating um, to the right um, with views out into the yard. Um, so I think that we have uh, the last slide here. Taylor. Yeah, so th this, this slide um, was, part of an exercise where we were um, reading through all the letters that, that we gathered from um, the, the uh, future thinking exercise that, that all the students went through. And one of the themes that we 
we're seeing, and, and it kind of reinforced um, what we had already been thinking about during visioning and concept was words like um, living room, cozy, comfy, kitchen, uh, this sort of residential terminology. You know, when we were talking about um, the idea of this place during concept and visioning, the idea of a, a home or second home or, you know, a home away from home was, was really um, came to the top. And, and this just kept uh, reinforcing that. Um, the, think, the thinking behind providing a, a quiet place for reading uh, was a, a common theme that we kept reading about. Um, and so we thought that this would be a good, maybe starting off point for um, inspiring a, a discussion about how the space might feel, um, how one might imagine a day in the life of using this new um, uh, facility at, at, with, with all these additions and, and renovations in place. Barrett, I don't know, I would turn it back over to you here. Um, if, if there are specific questions or, you know, we can uh, go over, go wherever you, you think would be helpful. I know we lost the students uh, just a few moments ago. Yeah, well, thank you for a great presentation, everyone, and, and great work. And we love how much you put community voice at the front of your design. Um, it's, been, it's been a really valuable process for our community to go through. So yes, uh, we can open a dialogue about feel uh, to get some commentary from those that are still with us. Um, but I'd also be curious, Tyler, we have our board meeting immediately after this. And I do wonder, since we're towards the end of schematic design, are there a few last questions that we should resolve in our meeting tonight? So I'm gonna actually turn it back to you. Just if you think that there's some board conversation that needs to happen um, to get us towards the end, or we can just compile all of our questions if you'd like and debrief with you tomorrow or in a few days. What, what do you think? Sorry. I um, on you on that. How about, how about well, that? I, I changed my mind mid-sentence. I don't want you, I don't want to put you in the hot seat right now because um, I know you guys are, these guys, uh, are designing to elements that are coming from the zoning people like every day. So there are changes to this plan that are just a day old. Um, why don't I just compile all the comments that have been written down through this exercise and I'll consolidate them, send them back to you. And we can have a little discussion about the aftermath of this. But while we have folks, what I hear from you is like the feel and how does this change your experience? That would be valuable now. So if there are questions specifically about the plan, make sure they make them onto your blue paper. Um, if you don't have a piece of paper and you're joining us by Zoom, please email me uh, or text me, Barrett. Um, but let's open it to discussion. Um, not so much questions, but how does this plan change your experience uh, interacting with PCS? And it can be anyone on Zoom or in person. Let's start with Teddy. <laughs> Address. Um, I, I think it's wonderful. I, I it, it actually it brings a tear to my eye thinking about how much like we haven't been using the facility the last couple of years, and it's so exciting to see a place like that that is just going to be so much have so much more room to relax and feel comfortable in because it you know it does feel crammed in here even though there hasn't been a lot of people we use a lot of space up pretty quickly and uh, and I'm only here during Monday night leagues or the occasional match in the morning uh, so it's very exciting and I think that you know the attention to detail and 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 to having communal spaces throughout is really uh, wonderful to see and I'm very excited to, to I want to flash forward a couple of years and be sitting in the nook somewhere just enjoying myself with friends and uh, all of you guys. So thank you. I love it. Thanks, Teddy. 